Hey there, Wondering Watchers. Welcome to this unboxing and flip through of Fun de Cicle Kipper Fortune Telling Deck by Chiro Marchetti. I found this on Amazon. It is a mass uh, market deck and I understand it is slightly different than using tarot but I read reviews that indicate people use this uh, for clarification of tarot cards and pretty much whatever they want so here there is the box it is like a hard Kind of clamshell uh, magnetic closed box. On the back it says in his fin de cycle deck situated in Victorian England Chiro Marchetti has created the contemporary heir to the Kipper tradition. With three supplemental cards the deck represents human experiences across all echelons of society. Card meanings are provided by three expert Kipper readers. Includes 39 cards and 83 page illustrated guidebook. These cards can be combined with the Gilded Reverie Lenormand or used interactively with the Erasma app, US Game Systems Inc. Okay, so I understand that the Fin de Cicle. I heard it pronounced multiple ways. Uh, means something along the lines of end of the century. So here is the guidebook. It's it's pretty sturdy. Black and white. Um, pictures on the inside, drawings, and here's an introduction. And it looks like I'll need um, to use the pronunciation app for this. It kind of talks about some of the uh, cards, I believe, that were added. And let's see here. Why Kipper? Through Chiro's work, I hope many non-German speakers can now be delighted by the deck spirit, the Kippergeist. Even in the brief time I've been working with Chiro's deck, it has astonished me with its directness, practicality, and accuracy. Open yourself to the Kippergeist. I believe it will likewise gently surround and captivate you. That's by Fortune Buchos and then how they read the kipper and then it gets into the, the card meaning. So, might as well look at the cards. So I'm gonna flip through here and see that there are 39 entries and then it goes into some spreads and then it goes into a sample spread. The spread, these are pretty complex spreads, not like just the three card spread. Here's six card spreads, the triple pyramid spread, okay? Uh, the cards in the pyramids are dealt face up. The surprise cards are dealt face down. Interesting, okay? And this spread has eight cards in it. The starting situation, this is a fact, this is an illusion, the opportunities you have, what you should forget, this is helpful now, this is not helpful now, and final resort, result. Okay, and then it says augmented reality animations. As a bonus feature, I've developed a unique interactive experience for the Fin Sickler Kipper deck when used with a smartphone or tablet. Each card has an accompanying 
animated and narrated video that is intended to help those unfamiliar to the Kipper system learn and remember the general meanings. These augmented reality videos are referred to as auras and have been created to work with a free application called Erasma. Once the app is installed and you are following my work, search Jiro Marchetti, simply select the square icon at the bottom of the app and point your device's camera at the card. The app will recognize the card and the associated video will automatically play. There is delay, there may be insufficient lighting or reflection, so try repositioning the card at a better angle. Once the video is playing, you can stop it at any point with a double tap, which will return you to the scanning screen. From here, you can scan the next card. A single tap on the screen will link you to my website where you can find more information. www.chiromarchetti.com Wow, that's cool. I have not seen that. Seen a lot of QR code menus for restaurants and bars lately, but I have not seen something like that for a tarot, oracle, or other divination type deck. So here, I'm trying to get the plastic off and noticing the silver edges on this deck which seem pretty cool. Um, the dimensions on the Amazon website said 3.25 by 1 point, or sorry, by 1 by 5 inches. I don't think that's what this is. And again, I have to take out my ruler and I'm assuming you know, maybe it's they're talking about the boxes. Um, some of the tuck boxes are pretty much the same size as the cards, but this one is like a clamshell type of box and it's got some extra room. So let's see, something along here should be five inches. Let's try this way. There's the inch. And here's five inches where my finger is right here, my fingertip. And you can see there's like this much space to five inches. So there's nothing on here that's five inches long. Okay, let's see if this is at least over three inches long. It is. It is almost 3.25 inches. So but definitely the card, the cards themselves, this is like a little over four inches and a little under three inches. So I'm not sure exactly what the dimensions are saying they are, but they're not exactly what is on the website. Okay, so here we're gonna go through a Look through of these cards. So you have here the main ma male. So the male significator and the co protagonist of our novel. In keeping with the time, he is a fine gentleman, a so called man of qualities, and we meet him in his study. Note the paintings in the study refer to other cards. Ooh. So let's see what's there. Let's see. Um, I see other paintings, but I don't know the other cards to know what the other paintings are. So I'll just put this off to the side. I don't know if this is like big enough to actually go through all of them and have them show up. We'll see. And here is the main female. So I'm not reading all of it, just kind of the first line. The female significator and the likewise co-protagonist. She is an elegant lady clad in a fine tea dress edged with lace and beading, properly wearing her pearls in the afternoon. We meet her in a, her private sitting room. Her rosebud points upwards to what's on her mind. 
that shows the importance of open, deep, romantic love in her life. Okay. Then we have marriage. Number three. What's great about the Kipper is that we don't have to wait for the happy ending. This is the positive card depicting an idyllic wedding in a fairy tale country church. It stands not only for a literal wedding when combined with adjudication card 30 and lovers card 15, but any kind of close contractual relationship such as a business partnership or joint venture. Interesting. So it is kind of like you know, the four of wands or the lovers card in tarot. You have here the four courtship card. Let's see. Visiting was a major activity of the time period for people and an enormous body of etiquette surrounded proper visiting and correct courtship. Hmm. So I guess is this equivalent to like a dating app? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Um, we meet the potential couple in the morning dress seated in a restrained and proper French garden. This card is interpreted literally about the early stages of a relationship. Note that Cupid's bow is unstrung and has no arrow. Oh, there's the little Cupid statue behind them. Interesting. Okay. Here we have Mature Man. Sober and thoughtful in his day suit, we meet this wise older gentleman in his library. He's on your side, generally, representing all kinds of bosses, guides, mentors, authorities, and executives, as well as important male relatives, as well as important male relatives, such as grandfathers, uncles, fathers, stepfathers, fathers-in-law, all sorts of father, father, fathers. All right, far away or especially behind you, or with the false person card eight, he can be challenging figure, a challenging figure. In opposite sex and same sex affairs, both I use him as the other man. Oh, this is like the one person's view. And then the other person is like, this is a wise person who might become important to you. And the person says, it's an older man relative or boss. Wise and helpful. Okay. Let's see here. Number six, mature woman. I like the colors of that dress. So here in the Mature Woman card, we meet this gracious lady of a certain age in an elaborate day dress as she sits in her salon. A mature woman, she generally listens to your concerns, offering aid and good advice. Some also look above this card to see what's on her mind. As a counterpart to card five, she's an important female relatives such as grandmother, mother, stepmothers, all the mothers, aunts, got mothers, female authority, guides, teachers, like card number five, the mature man. Bring this down a little bit. Um, like number five, you want to be close or in, you want her close or in front of you far away behind you or with the false person card eight she can be a problem mm, okay interesting um so depending on the other cards if she's behind you or below you or the signific significator card she's a meddler or a troublemaker interesting <laughs> okay here we have card number seven, message. The original connotation of this card is a pleasant message. Generally good news, unless with challenging cards. Below you may be something you're in denial or refusing to see. 
Um, inside the letterbox, we see different kinds of written notes, a business or calling card. Oh, inside this little letterbox right here. So it can be informal communications. It also shows your messages and mails, private or public. And the broken seal in the envelope suggests a particular scene. The message is one that has been received. Oh, right here. The, the wax seal has been broken. Okay. So, oh, here's the infamous false person card number eight. Okay. In this challenging card, we see a sly and evasive woman hiding her real expression behind her Spanish fan. At the side of the marble hall lurks a mysterious and somewhat sinister man in a fancy dress mask. Is he sinister or just a mask with a mustache? Or is that considered sinister? It must be universally sinister. Okay. So, what are they hiding? Drama kings and queens, lovers of troubles, manipulators, frenemies. Um, watch out. This card has the power to turn beneficial cards into their opposite. When next to them, lies and liars, danger and deceit. Um, even far away, it may mean treachery. So that's interesting. Don't trust everyone or everything you see. Card warns of dishonesty. And at best, this card stands for a mistake or a faux pas. Like, oops, I brought a mask that does not match the color of my tie. I guess that'd be a faux, faux pas. Okay. And let's see here. Nine. Card of change. It's time to go. This card shows a hardworking porter in a flat workman's cap packing up your stylish furniture in a horseleash horseless carriage okay there's there's the the person packing there you're moving from your old townhouse into a better into better digs and you, you don't plan to come back okay with family room card 21 literally a new apartment with house card 20 a new house okay so move change physical location. Um, this card is usually metaphorical circumstances are changing, but with card 27, unexpected income, a literal re relocation or move is coming soon. All right. Card 10, we have this journey card. And this card illustrates travel via first class carriage from Victoria Station. Notice the wealthy man on the platform standing with his fine leather luggage not too far from the denizens of second class. Card stands for all forms of travel, vehicles, vacations, trips, um, transportation. Uh, there's with thief card 24, it warns of loss, theft, or accident while traveling. This isn't an unavoidable fate, so look for warning cards. Um, and this can be arrival as well as departure. All right, now we are on to sudden wealth, card number 11. This card shows as a slot machine with all sevens. It's your lucky number. Gold coins spill onto the casino table. This card could mean the lost check that shows up, a monetary gift, a larger than anticipated tax refund, a bingo win. But if with the false person card eight, your luck could turn sour and result in a loss. And watch out for that thief card 24. Hmm. So basically, this is supposed to be like money that is a gift, a surprise, um, something that is not 
anticipated or expected. So here, this number 12, you have the privileged lady. And the privileged lady is very close to the sudden wealth. Um, says we meet the privileged lady, the epitome of wealth, ease, youth, health, beauty, and charm as she strolls across the wide lawn past the orchid house, lavishly dressed. Okay, stands for fun, creativity, luxury, the good life, and all beautiful things. Best friend to the main female, card number two. Um, that's in opposite sex readings or the partner of the main female in same-sex readings. And she is, let's see here, mm, with false person card number eight, uh, she can be a mean girl capable of snobbery, vanity, disdain, and cluelessness. Interesting. All right. Here we have number 13, Wealthy Man. He's in a mahogany paneled office at the end of a successful trading day with top hat in hand. Um, oh, top hat and gray suede gloves in hand. I didn't notice the gray suede gloves. Okay. Uh, counterpart to the privileged lady. He might be thought of as a venture capitalist, banker, financier, or an entrepreneur. He stands for career success, business acumen, smart plans, rational thought, and well-calculated risks. It's like the wealthy man is all kings and the fool as well, and the emperor. Watch out if this card is next to false person card eight. When you see this combination, read the fine print and double check your plans. All right. Can be a man, a company, a business, or employer. And let's see here. Message of concern. We have it here. Number 14. Okay. Here's another of Kipper's challenging cards, the negative counterpart to message card seven. Ooh, all right. So here we see a lady standing in front of her writing desk, receiving the mail. Her face registers surprise and her hand leaps her heart in dismay. Disappointing news, a setback, definitely not what you wanted to hear can be even a small crisis or quarrel unless with false person card eight in which case it is all a misunderstanding man this false person really gets around all right so oh uh, what the message might be relating to could be indicated by adjacent cards all right now we have this lover's card Card 15, it's what everyone hoped for in the 19th century, the good match. Pretty sure everyone is hoping for that in uh, the 21st century and probably uh, many centuries to come. Romantic love, profound friendship, loyalty, and trust are all represented in this card with false person card number eight. Dun, dun, dun. Examine the situation carefully for manipulation, cheaters, gold diggers, con artists, and deceit. Love is all great, except with the false person. All right. In professional terms, it may show a workplace love affair. Perhaps it means you love your work and that your heart and mind are in harmony. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. So basically, excellent as long as it isn't near card number eight, which points to obstacles and dishonesty. Well, I mean, it's right next to card no number eight, so everyone's kind of screwed. Sorry. All right, 16. You have thoughts. Thoughts. This card represents the thoughts of a man the questioner is interested in. 
His thoughts are positive when not touching cards 8, 14, 23, 24, 29, or 30. All right. So if I put it right here, it's not touching number 8. Um, it's not touching number 14. We haven't gotten to the other ones yet. This card also means making plans. Um, this card is perhaps Kipper's great gift. At last, a card directly addressing thoughts and matters of the mind. And it's generally positive. Artist in the studio. Um, and in the thoughts, it might be this, this uh, person being painted here. When surrounded by challenging cards, thoughts may reveal things you didn't want to know. Hmm. Let's see. Though it often indicates thinking about love or a person and feeling firmly connected with someone, it seems somewhat platonic and love matters. It also shows memories and ideas. All right. So here we have this card number 17. This gift card. This is a very positive and enabling card. While the significator relaxes in the family room by a cozy fire. All right, this card means gifts, aid, help, support, resources, rescue, and joy. It's usually exactly what you need. All right. Um, Be open to the support of others. Be receptive. This is a very lucky card that can take the edge off nearby negative cards. Stands for happiness, praise, profits, recognition, or an actual gift. Near the significator, it's even stronger. All right, here we have number 18, child. We meet this happy, charming child in traditionally frilly clothes, clutching her beloved stuff bunny in a Victorian nursery right up out of Mary Poppins. In keeping with the time period, kids wore ruffles, petticoats. This could mean any child represents innocence, naivete, the new, the simple, and the small. This contrasts with high honor card 25, which can mean tall. It can be used for spring, Easter, Astara, Children, child, inner child, new beginnings, new job, new love, something new, something small, something, oh, bad cards near this one can bring grief as it's vulnerable. All right. Well, you got this coffin card is number 19 right next to it. Sorry, child. Um, this, oh, this is a neutral to challenging cards depending heavily on those around it here we see the inside of a chapel lit through stained glass windows the sun illuminates a rose design the flower nobly present throughout the deck um it refers to what is nailed shut Ooh, interesting so let it go move on when other challenging cards are near consider anger rage destruction and malice as possibilities uh, this is time to say goodbye, endings, retirements. If close to the significator and with card 21 nearby, it will occur suddenly. Hmm. can also represent a dark time, night or winter. So here we're at card 20. We have this house card. It looks like a house. The significator has arrived at the fine wrought iron gates of impressive five-story Queen Anne mansion, which blazes with gas lights. It is a waning moon or an eclipse of the sun. Are we coming for a dinner or a ball? Basically, it refers to house, home, property, real estate, buildings, land dealings. It can represent safety, family coziness, security, long-term investments, family, neighborhoods. Um, this could be an actual place where you live. All right. 
interesting. This is a lucky card when near the significator, but in the center of the spread, the people who surround it can be dangerous. The timing is approximately six months. Hmm. Okay. Here is card 21, family room. Mid-morning coffee is served in the bur bourgeois drawing room, true to Victorian style. Drawing room in better houses was off the former parlor and was a place to withdraw for entertaining close friends and family. Society visits. Um, welcoming and supportive space where secrets and personal matters may be shared. Uh, literally, it's a room and stands for all private or enclosed spaces such as living rooms, hotel rooms, offices with doors, apartments. Um, I wonder if private rooms, private or enclosed spaces. What about a toilet stall? I don't think so. Um... Let's see here, hold fast. Wait, traditionally it means anywhere from 24 hours to four weeks. That's very precise. All right. So here we have a card 22, the official person. This is somewhat a somewhat challenging card. We meet the official person in the marble foyer of the officer's club where he greets us with a fine bearing and a notched saber. The many medals from his imperial campaign shines against his bright red coat. Literally, he's any person in a uniform. Military man, police officer, fireman. Um, he can stand for gruff, forceful, and even humorless person. Loves ceremony, pomp, hierarchy, regiments, and order. Um, let's see here. Next to non-person cards, it can also mean it's happening whether you like it or not. This is kind of like, um, the Knight of Pentacles and the, the Hierophant and the, uh, Knight of Swords kind of wrapped up in one all right i'm gonna put this one over the main mail and let's see here when the card appears you may be confronted with strict strict rules of daily life maybe you'll experience situation where power and authority are required okay number 23 courthouse. This is a somewhat challenging card. Here we meet a solicitor coming from proceedings in his wig, white collar, and gown. This means lawsuits, court proceedings, divorces, wills, contracts, taxes, disputes, all legal matters. All right, far away or with other challenging cards, beware. Okay, I'm putting this over the main female. All right, this card can also refer to nego negotiations or official buildings, government buildings. Um, interesting. Your relationship has to undergo a test now or possibly it's your employment. Courthouse recommends discovering the truth and coming to an honest decision. Uh, let's see here. It could be bad news if it's distant from the significator close to significator it brings good news about matters despite the overly legal and symbolic depiction the card can represent general official dealings of any kind driver's license renewals passports okay here we have card number 24 thief who's the thief here is it the lady is it the young boy is it the main man this is a very challenging and negative card in a dark and foggy alley with distant gas lights on the wrong side of marble arch we meet the ragamuffin pickpocket the thief literally this card means theft embezzlement and loss either material or emotional card is in front or above the significator you may recoup your loss 
behind, below, or far away, and when reinforced by other challenging cards, is likely gone forever. Hmm. Thief can stand for few or fewer in contrast to card 11, which is the sudden wealth card here. Um, this can stand for many. So many th thieves. When this card appears, you should be warned. It indicates loss. Um, or something that's missing, or simply missing out on something. Dishonesty. So I guess the, um, what's that word? Ragamuffin pickpocket must be this, this little dude right here. I'm going to put him over uh, the marriage card because that seems appropriate. Okay, so we are on to number 25, High Honor. This is a most enabling and positive card. Here we see the can cannonades as the significator receives a 21 gun salute. Well, hopefully the cannons are not aimed at the significator. All right, represents anything high and tall. Oh, I think I remember there was like a tall child was like 18 and is that right? Um, yeah. Represents a small child, but it can mean tall if it's next to this, you know, high honor can mean tall or the kid can mean tall. Uh, this contrast with high honor 25, which can mean tall. Yeah, I guess so. Small, tall, putting that over courtship. Okay. Oh, it, it says right here, uh, it could stand for a landmark, skyscraper, or tall public building next to a person. It could be a description for tall in comparison to child card 18, which represents small. Be a bit careful if next to false person card eight or thief card 24. Well, it's next to card 24, at least for now. This could be graduating from school or training or receiving recognition from your peers, academic degrees, certificates, awards, medals. All right, number 26, we have Great Fortune. This is a most enabling, powerful, and positive card. Here on the balcony, at the end of the promenade, we encounter the goddess Fortuna in marble, gilded by a blazing sunset so all the significant wishes are coming true outstanding good luck triumph wealth happiness fruitfulness like gift card 17 great fortune turns challenging cards into um the significator's benefit all right let's put it over the mature man um considered by many to be the best card in the deck okay and great fortune doesn't provide comfort for the rest of your days, but it indicates you can hope for an improvement or winning streak, new opportunities, job matters, relationships, things like that. Okay, number 27, unexpected income. Here we see the significator giving a coin to the needy in front of the house, card 20, right here, in front of the house. Okay, it doesn't seem like a lot to the giver, but it's significant to the recipient. Literally, it's a small sum from an unexpected source. For example, surprise work bonus, small billing error you fixed, reduction in your gas bill, bonus cell phone minutes, cell phone minutes, that's funny. Um, and it's not as large as this sudden wealth card. So it's kind of like the Six of Pentacles. We'll put it over the mature woman. Um, the unexpected leads to a notion of suddenly, swiftly, surprisingly, um, paying bills. And let's see, anything else? Oh, for timing, it's about two weeks. That's interesting. Okay. So number 28, we have this expectation card. 
Here we meet a resigned and slightly somber lady gazing out the windows over a misty orchard. orchard. Church bear. I can't speak today. Church bells toll in the background. Is that a locket dangling from her lace choker holding a picture of her friend? Yes. And she is waiting with clasped hands. Literally, this card means a pause, a waiting period. No forward motion. It's a time for observation, reflection, contemplation, thinking things through patience and non-action. Kind of like the, uh, maybe the hanged man. Let's see. Card describes all your expectations, wishes, and hopes card of longing and it ref sometimes referred to as the three months patience okay card number 29 imprisonment on this challenging card we see a pair of battered hands clutching the iron bars in harsh prison tattered sleeves offer scant cover to a set of bony wrists Literally, this is a prison, jail, asylum, rehab center, bank, bank, or military barracks. More abstractly, abstractly, it stands for any locked off limits and secured place. It represents a sense of confinement, imprisonment, isolation, and desperate not motionlessness. While expectation card 28 has a sense of time limit to it, this card does not. This is a card of being trapped, whether it's a relationship, or a job. Now let's put imprisonment over the false person. Okay. So with card 31, bad health, it can be a hospital or illness. It can refer to large buildings, institutions, and bad luck. Imprisonment does not necessarily refer to a prison sentence, describes all kind of isolation and renunciations. Um... It may be emotional imprisonment. It might mean being trapped in a personal or contractual relationship where your opinions may be restricted by feelings of guilt, your conscience, legal obligation, or financial limitations. Card 30, Judication. This is a neutral to somewhat challenging card. We see the magistrate on his bench, the anxious cup at couple before him awaiting his decision he will make a decision on the, your matter could be for or against you this card stands for minor government officials bureaucrats clerks school boards zoning boards other kind of boards professional advisors um it might be a judge mediator lawyer doctor counselor it's kind of like the hierophant or the justice card um possibly the king of swords and maybe even the uh, judgment card adjudication describes clarifying discussions or debates in professional terms all all, per all participants in an advisory role are represented all right other cards in the spread will provide more indication of the possible outcome. So here is 31, bad health. Pictured here is a patient in a bare bones public ward on a hard iron bed with a thin blanket while a nurse checks his chart. Literally, uh, it means poor health, a cold, a minor illness, a sprain, with card distant horizons, which we haven't come to yet, it could be more serious. A checkup could be in order. This could put you in bed, could mean rest, breaks, naps. Um, with card 14, the message of concern card over here, then it can be a serious, serious illness, but with more favorable cards, it's something minor and short-lived. And then its position can tell you about where the problem is. Behind a person card, it's the back. Above it, someplace in the upper half of the body. Below it, problems below the 
problems below the waist. This card can warn of heart problems. Since this card features a bed, it's also the sex card. This is the sex card? Bad health? There's got to be a better sex card. Um, right? There's got to be a better sex card. I mean, there's a bed with this card and a child. That's probably not a good sex card. There's, there's a couch. The family room. That seems like this, a good sex card. Um, and even, even the house could be a good sex card. I don't know about good. It could be one. Um, I wonder if this expectation cards could be a sex card because it's like a couch and expectations could be like pregnancy. But fine. It's also the sex card. Bad health and sex. It's time to rest and recover now. Retire to do nothing. Bad health can indicate a patient's room, bed rest, or medical treatment. In love matters, it can indicate problems in the relationship. All right, put this number 31. At a professional level, it describes temporary break in the form of illness, inability to act. Number 32, despair. This is a challenging card. Here we meet a man in shabby clothes, a member of the working poor, distraught from unemployment, reduced to letting a tear slip in the street, literally grieving or weeping. Severe stress. Uh, can lead to emotional exhaustion, serious concussions, fevers, and migraines. It's also commonly used for jealousy. With luck, a positive card will be next to it and offer balance. Unfortunately, it's not very promising. Um, it's like basically despair. And frustration, headaches, fever, jealousy, or anger. But things will work out if po positive cards are near. All right. Number 33. You have this concern card here. Another challenging card. Here we meet an older man with anxiety and rumination apparent in his posture. He closes his eyes to the beautiful warm light streaming in through the stained glass window. Sign of angst. I'm putting him over the privileged lady here. This card can, let's see here. Ambiguities in our daily life, maybe a sense of lacking career prospect, fears, convey concentration problems and relationships that warns against pessimisms, worry. Um, consider surrounding cards very carefully. It can speak of profound worry, rejection, deception. Card 32 is the despair card. Is a panicky, desperate card, but 33 relates to depression and despair. Interesting. So this is just like um, panicky or despair on its own. And this is depression and despair, even though this person's wearing a suit in a house in the sunlight. And this person's like on the streets. Um, in like a like a dark alley okay uh, number 34 you have occupation a seamstress in her workroom stitching fabric on a treadle treadle sewing machine she appears to be deeply absorbed and working late into the evening so kind of like the eight of pentacles Card can represent self-employment, freelancing, DIY work, piece work, whatever you cobble together. Let's put this over the wealthy man. All right. Pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. That's a quote by Aristotle, apparently. Occupation indicates all mental and physical activities, for example, sports, hobbies, or your daily work. In the context of a relationship, it may indicate that the questioner is working on the relationship to overcome difficulties. It's a key card for a job. Um, refers to handcrafting, work in the arts, enjoying what you do, self-employment. In combination with card 26, this great fortune card, could... Um, 
that's supposed to mean self-employment. Okay. Card 35, you have pathway here. The significator arrives at a long rocky forest path. It winds uphill, but the trees seem cool and inviting. The destination can't quite be seen, but it looks like there's a pleasant patch of sun after the climb. So a sense of a long road, marathons, triathlons, distance, great lengths. Um, this card may concern the slow growth of a partnership or long-term career planning. And I'll put this over the message of concern. This card means a long road ahead. It is sometimes referred to as two years patience. Okay, instead of the three months patience for expectation. Here we have card number 36, Distant Horizons. This is an enabling, usually positive card, a beautiful dreamlike ship with gossamer rainbow sails, lift lifts anchor to fly you to the wide shores of your wildest hopes. Literally, this card represents yearnings, dreams, hopes, wishes, new shores, um, faraway places, foreign people, and greater distances than this pathway card here. Okay, from the sense of foreign contact, it also suggests opening your mind, developing new views, becoming more spiritual or philosophical. All right, traditionally, its position is important. If next to a positive or hoped for card, it can mean it's currently a vision, something unrealized, something that takes um, more concrete effort to make it real. So let's put this over lovers. All right. Um, with false person number eight up here, it kind of takes alcoholism and addictions. Interesting. This card can mean daytime in contrast to coffin card 19 here, which means nighttime. All right, let's see. Hopes will come to pass if card 26 is next to this card. 26 is this great fortune card. And it says the card indicates silver lining on the horizon. It also has everything to do with water and liquidity. For instance, ocean seas or drinks. Distant Horizons also announces discovery of spirituality and new adventures. So I see here in this distant horizon that there is water at the very bottom here, but this flying anchor kind of covers it up a bit. All right, 37, this poverty card. This is a challenging card. Here we meet a young chimney sweep in ragged, dirty clothes atop a dangerous roof with his mop and broom. The 19th century Britain and Switzerland, oh, in 19th century. Okay. Abandoned or orphaned boys were purchased for the perilous labor of climbing up inside chimneys to clean out the flammable creosote, sometimes while they were actually on fire. Essentially a short life of a miserable child of miserable child slavery. Um, a far cry from the sheltered life of the privileged lady. Literally, it stands for grinding monetary circumstances, poverty, or large monetary loss. Abstractly, it represents lack of control, a bad position, scarcity, both physical and emotional, being down on your luck. Or maybe uh, a child being on fire in a chimney. That seems horrible horrible let's see here the boy won't be paid a living wage just a few pennies children such as this led brutal lives which are often cut short unable to meet basic needs poverty is um predicts deprivation and lack 
in both material emotional matters. In partnership terms, you may feel defenseless and unloved. Best you can hope to gain is to learn from a crisis. All right. 38, we have toil and labor. This is a somewhat challenging card. Here we meet a young girl in the dreaded 19th century textile mill, tending to the dangerous and loud mechanized looms for 12 hours a day. Brutally hard manual work with the risk of losing fingers and hearing awaited this, these girls. Low wage manual labor, drudgery with no hope for advancement, thankless chores, burdensome, and employment uh, to simply cover financial basis to put food on the table. Then we have card 39. Community. This is an enabling positive card. Here we meet the cheerful and stoic working class gardener, the flower girl of Covenant Garden, the errand boy from the local pub, the servants who all come together and support. This literally means friends, community, support, being understood, place where you belong. Describes people with whom you have connections, family, relatives, friends, like minded people, unions, associations, good teamwork. And let's see here, the original Kipper dealt principally with the domestic aspect of people's lives portrayed from their homes and living rooms. However, as I've outlined in the introduction, this domestic perspective was the privilege of the wealthier classes. For the vast majority, social interaction would be beyond the cramped conditions of wherever they lived. Their places of work, taverns and street corners were, would have been where they share their daily lives. Okay, so these are the 39 cards, and I'm going to do a, just like a, a little draw of a few cards here. I'm going to need to, you know, figure out the positioning and so forth when it comes to understanding the cards, but I'll just go ahead and pull a few cards just to do a little interview of the deck. Before I do that, here is the silver edges. And here is a close up of the card back. Looks like it's like a court gesture here. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle. The cards are like uh, really glossy. They seem pretty easy to shuffle. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick a card to let me know about the essence of this deck, what this deck hopes to teach, and a card that I should get to know better. All right. Concern, despair, and mature man. All right. So the essence of this deck is concern, which I recall was included despair and depression. Uh, basically, uh, a sense of worry in terms of what it wants to teach. I guess it wants to teach despair um, or how to come out of just uh, depression to despair. It wants to teach how to deal with being down on your luck. And a card I should uh, get to know better is this mature man. 
which I would think is possibly my husband. That's fair. So if you have experience with this deck, uh, any further insight to provide, I would be happy to hear about it. And we'll see you next time. Take care.